with Russia's war on Ukraine now hitting the four-month mark, the diplomatic developments and battlefield updates roll on, with a primary step towards European Union membership for Ukraine. Another call for Ukrainian soldiers to retreat from a strategic front line, as well as speculation over changes in Kazakhstan's relations with neighbor Russia. Ukraine has been granted EU candidate status after the European Parliament adopted a resolution Thursday to call on European heads of state to grant the status to Ukraine and Moldova without delay, with an overwhelming majority of 529 MEPs voting in favour of the resolution. The text of the resolution revealed the following in a clear criticism of Russia. The Parliament underscores that the granting of candidate status by the European Union will equate to showing leadership, resolve and vision in today's context of the brutal Russian war of aggression against Ukraine and an attempted redefinition of the geopolitical environment. And it sends a clear political message that the countries in question have irreversibly chosen a European path, which has been accepted by their European partners and should not be the subject of interference from any third parties. The Parliament reiterates that the EU must continue to be a reliable partner and credible geopolitical actor that lives up to its own principles and values by showing solidarity with those who stand up for the same ideals. The developments were welcomed by the European Council President Charles Michel and Ukraine President Volodymyr Zelensky, both of whom labelled it a historic moment. Zelensky declared in an address to the Ukrainian people on Thursday, and I quote, This path is not politics. I believe this is what will always be the starting point of Europe's new history. Europe without division. Europe without grey zones. Europe that is truly united and that knows how to defend itself, its values, its future. Unquote. Despite its significance, candidacy status is only the first step in a lengthy legal, political and diplomatic process for a country like Ukraine or Moldova to become a full member of the Union, which involves meeting numerous conditions. Turkey and several countries in the Balkan Peninsula had been granted candidate status over a decade ago and are yet to satisfy all these conditions for membership. Over on the battlefield, Lugansk Oblast Governor Sergei Haidai told Ukrainian media that the country's forces have been told to withdraw from Severodonetsk, which has been reportedly overrun under Russian control, with the majority of the city's infrastructure destroyed, according to the BBC. Remaining in positions that have been relentlessly shelled for months just doesn't make sense. They have received orders to retreat to new positions, and from there continue their operations. There is no point in staying in positions which have been destroyed over several months just for the sake of staying, Haidai added. Meanwhile, Al Jazeera reports of a possible diplomatic conundrum due to the war for former Soviet Republic and current Russia ally Kazakhstan. Addressing the International Economic Forum in St. Petersburg on 17 June in the presence of Vladimir Putin, Kazakhstan President Kasim Jomart Tokayev had refused to recognize the Donetsk People's Republic and Lugansk People's Republic as independent states and compared them to Taiwan, Kosovo and the breakaway states in Georgia. While an Almaty-based business person told Al Jazeera that Tokaya's remarks were simply a move to avoid any significant sanctions on Kazakhstan, a member of Russia's state Duma, Konstantin Zatulin, responded with an apparent threat to Kazakh sovereignty. There are many towns with a predominantly Russian population that have little to do with what was called Kazakhstan. I'd like Astana, which is the old name of the Kazakh capital Nur Sultan, not to forget that with friends and partners, we don't raise territorial matters and don't argue. With the rest, like for example, with Ukraine, everything is possible. Al Jazeera quoted Zatulin as saying, For The Print, this is Raga Bichandani. For more, log on to theprint.in and follow us on social media.